Well, good morning, church. How are we doing today? I bet you guys are pumped to be here, aren't you? Yeah. I bet you guys are super pumped to be here today. It is a good God kind of day, isn't it? And uh, not like good God, like, oh no, it's bad. It's like, good God, thank you, right? Like, yes, I, I'm pumped, man. I told someone in the lobby, I'm like, I see sunshine. I might be outside all afternoon, right? I'm ready for that. I'm re- I've been, I wanna go on a mountain somewhere. Anybody else? Come on. Uh, and so if you're first time with us today, do me a favor. We hand out these connect cards on the way in. Mark the box on there that says my first time. Put your email on there. I'd just love to send you some information about Refresh. And we have a gift for you back there at our Welcome Center. And everyone else who is not a first time guest, I want to be praying with you. And I said this last week. I'm going to say it again this week. 2023 holds something for you. You have that prayer that you are praying. Or you might even be afraid to pray it by yourself. I want to pray it with you. Some of you need that over your life financially physically, relationally, spiritually. You're, you're praying for an awakening of something and I don't want you praying alone. So I, write it down. Let me know. I'll be praying with you this week, all right? Or this year over that 2023 prayer, all right? Uh, next weekend, um, we're gonna kick off Monday actually. So next weekend will be our final weekend before it, our week of prayer. And we did this last year. Um, I had so many great emails and messages from our week of prayer come back that people prayed that week with me. Um, We're going to do it online every morning at 7, and so you guys can jump in. Maybe you can, if you're not a 7 a.m. kind of a person, maybe you're like a 10 a.m. watch it kind of a person, okay? Or maybe you're a 7 p.m. kind of a person or a midnight, I don't know. You could do whatever you want, but I'm going to encourage you, the 23rd through the 29th, that week, that Monday to Sunday, I want you to spend an hour with me praying, okay? Whether that's online or on your own or spread out over the course of the day, I want to encourage you to pray with me that week. And I want you to do something else on top of that. I want you to consider asking God something that you could fast. You guys are like, what's a fast? A fast is when you go without something so that you can grab onto God. Most often food. So there's Daniel fast. Some people do that. There's a, they, they eat a modified diet. Some people eat nothing. Some people are like, social media has been ruining my life. I'm off of it for seven days and maybe even longer. Can I get an amen? All right. Some, some of you guys need to turn off the news for a week. Some of y'all, like there's different things. Maybe you need to change the way you eat, change the way you live, something and shift your life for seven days. If, because you guys, you guys, you have this thing, right, that you've been praying for or chasing after, some awakening or some move of God that you've been searching for. And And you're going, I don't even know how he could do that in seven days. Listen, we're talking about the God who created the entire earth in seven days. Imagine what he could do in you through a week of prayer and fasting. Come on. Fasting is what we do to release the world and embrace him. And so if you've been struggling to release the world and embrace him, I encourage you, take seven days with me and let's change your year. Deal? 23rd through the 29th, we're gonna do that. And then on the 29th is our Kingdom Builders Sunday. One of my favorite Sundays of the year. It's a great year for vision. It's a great year for celebration. Uh, On the 29th, that Sunday, we're going to kind of turn the page from 2022 to 2023. We're going to celebrate everything that happened in 2022. We're going to turn our attention to the next year. We're going to see what God has for us in store. We're going to pray and we're going to plan and we're going to seek. So we're going to take a week of prayer and then we're going to celebrate what he did. We're going to look forward to what he's doing. Amen? As a church. So put it on your calendar on the 29th. Don't miss it. It's going to be a really great Sunday. All right. So this series we've been in, uh, this is the second week, is called Upon This Rock. And it's talking about foundations in your life. All of us have built our life on some sort of foundation. Sometimes that foundation is good. Sometimes that foundation is bad. Sometimes that foundation is strong. Sometimes that foundation is weak. The strongest foundation there is, though, is the rock known as Christ Jesus. And that's what we started with last week. And it's these lives that we build on good foundations are the lives that are really worth living. The lives that are worth multiplying. The lives that are worth passing on to the next generation of our families and the people around us. It is the rock that we build upon that actually make a huge difference in the long term. I want to review a verse for you from last week. And it comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
And it says this, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. And that's where we started last week. We got to start somewhere. We got to lay a foundation. This is the place. We're going to build our life on him. Anyone who builds on that foundation, the foundation of Jesus, may use a variety of materials. Where you build is important. What you build on top is up to you. Do you guys get that? You can use a variety of materials. You can use gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, straw. On the judgment day, fire, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss and the builder, the builder will be saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Kind of a tough verse to kick off a sermon with, don't you think? But here's the point. You can build any kind of life so long as it's on the rock, you're going to make it. Some of us have built our lives on things that are weak, straw, hay, right? Like the verse says. Some of us have built it with strength, We're building with gold and silver and the most precious materials we can. We're trying to build a life here on earth that is incredible, but it has to start on one foundation, right? And it's your choice how you build your life. It's your choice. Now, are there commands? Absolutely. Are there guidelines? Sure. There's things that we need to do, but the thing we must all decide right now is where we're going to build that rock or where we're going to build that life of ours and is it going to be on the foundation? Have you guys ever... Um, met someone who says they're like an athlete. Like, if I were on the basketball court right now with you, I'd be draining threes over your face. I could dunk over your head, Uncle Rico. Back in 82, I could throw a pigskin a quarter mile. You guys know what I'm talking about? Napoleon Dynamite? Nobody? Somebody? Come on, millennials, help me out. But then you get on the court with them and they talk a good game, but they ain't got nothing. Anybody ever been to, met someone like that? Yeah, yeah, I'm that person. Did you say that? That's great. I love your honesty. What about, what about the grill master? Like I can cook. I made the best whatever the other night. Oh, it's so good. You, oh man, and they go to their house and it's like, kind of dry, bro. No, have you met someone like that? Or I'm not even going to talk about your grandmas. It's not even safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. Sometimes, sometimes Christians talk a big game. Foundation? Psh, I got foundations, baby. Rock of Christ Jesus, been there for years. But then when... Hardships come, what happened? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it in your own life? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm built. <laughs> Everybody say built. I'm built properly. I'm built, right? I'm built different. I'm built the way I'm supposed to be built. But then hard times come, what do you do? That's where the test is, Right? Because sometimes we talk a good game, but we can't follow through on the game because we said we were built somewhere, but we're actually not built there. Or maybe we thought we were built there, but we never got tested enough to prove it. That we thought we were there, but when the storms came, we found out we weren't. It's time to re-examine the way we've built or the place that we've built. There's a passage of scripture, and this is sort of the, the root scripture for today's message. It comes from Matthew chapter 7. And it's at the tail end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Have you guys ever read Matthew 5, 6, and 7? It's a three-chapter sermon that Jesus preaches. Probably lasted all day. Aren't you glad that I only go like 35, 40 minutes? Right? But this is like an all day. And at the very end of this sermon, this like day-long sermon where people are just seated out there in the Sermon on the Mount, just like out there in the wilderness, listening to Jesus. He gives them this story to kind of sum it all up, okay? He says this, 
Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The wise man is building. He's building on a rock, right? Like the, the, he built his life on the rock. I'm built. Are you built? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be built different. Are you trying to be built different? I'm trying to be built on the rock of Christ Jesus. Are you trying to do that? We got to be built right. We got to be built different than the rest of the world. It says the wise man who, who listened to these words, he built in the right place. He built on the right foundation. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. I, I like the past tense of this. It had been founded. It was already founded. The decision was already made about where the foundation of this house was going to be. And we didn't know that that foundation was going to be strong enough until the storm came. But before the storm comes, you need to choose the destination of your foundation so that you can be the kind of person that can say in the middle of the storm, it had already been founded. Because when the storm comes, it's too late to change the building location. You guys get what I'm saying? You got to choose it today before the storm comes tomorrow or the storm comes next week. Because let me, let me tell you, the storm is coming. It will always come. It will always come. It'll come in your finances. It'll come in your relationships. It'll come in your spiritual life. It'll come in your health. It'll come in your next generation of your families. It will come. So you need to make the decision today. It had been founded already. We can't wait for the storm to go. You know what? I think I picked the wrong spot. Let's go ahead and move this thing over here. It's too late. The rain has already started. The floodwaters are already rising. You got to make a decision. Okay. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built. Did you notice that everybody builds? The foolish man builds, the wise man builds. You build, I build. Young people build, old people build. Rich people build, poor people build. Smart people build, less smart people build. <laughs> right? Like, like everybody builds. But what makes you wise versus foolish? It's not even what you build because everybody's building. It's always about the where you're building, right? The foolish man built his house on the sand. And the same thing, the same storm comes. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. The fall was colossal. <laughs> Let's pray and then let God's word kind of sink into our heart today. Can we do that? Father, we come before you. We want to hear from you today, Lord. We want to hear about our foundations. We want to feel, hear about the rock. We want to hear about how we build and where we build, Lord. And I pray that the challenges of your word today would be received well in us, that we would respond to it and say, I am built on the rock of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Everybody says, amen. amen. So this passage, this passage is uh, well known. There's kids' songs about it. There's even, like, I was reminded of a song from the early 2000s by Big Tent Revival called Two Sets of Joneses this week, stuck in my head. Anybody know that song? Now, if you guys were raised in youth group, you probably do, right? Like, uh, and, and it's about this pa parable. There, there's, there's the kids' song, wise man built his house upon the rock. Yeah, you guys get that? Anybody grew up with that? Nope, you're like, no, TJ, that was a Florida thing. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, you're from Florida too. That's nice. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like we, we, we know the story. We know it. We, we sing the songs. We've, we've heard it. We, we, it's, it's one of the first parables that we learn as a kid. Build on the rock, build on the rock, build on the rock. When we get to be adults, we're like, oh, that, we're past that, right? Like we've already, we made that decision so long ago. Yep, I'm going to build on the rock. I gave my life to Christ. But as time goes on, we tend to move. Anybody ever notice that? 
Someone that was close to you. You're, you're, you're in church together, you're serving together, loving God together. And a drift started to occur. Maybe you moved off the rock. Maybe they moved off the rock. Maybe your relationship with a significant person in your life, the shift started to happen. Why? Because people, people are mobile. We build our life, but sometimes, sometimes we, we pull up our roots and we, we move to a different destination. So today, I want, I want to bring this to our attention, not to just say that we build, but where we build, and not even just where we build, but how we build. Because how we build and where we build are probably the most important things you can do in 2023 to change the trajectory of your life. So today, can we lean in on this a little bit? Everybody say built. Built. I'm, I'm going to be built different today. By the end today, I hope everybody is built just a little different. So here's the key to the whole parable. What was built didn't matter as much as where it was built. They were built, both, both built a life, the wise man and the foolish man. They both faced the storm, but only one of them survived. And, and it, was, it, was more, it was based on the where. And, and it's not even just like the, when the storm came that the where mattered. It's the everyday life too. So I, I told you I grew up in Florida. Um, when we were, when I was in high school doing a lot of athletics, and sometimes the coaches would be like, all right, we're going to run on the beach today. That was the worst day ever. Because when you run on a firm foundation, you get better traction. You, 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 you move a little quicker. You can control your steps a little more. Then you get out to the beach. You get worn out quick. Because that sand is moving. And the coaches would be like, it's good for you. It's so, it's so good for you because it, it'll, it'll increase your muscles and, and it'll be harder. And I'm like, I don't like harder. I don't want it to be that way. I, in, in fact, every time I ran on the beach, I would almost, almost always step on a shell, twist my ankle. Like I was exhausted by the end of it and I was broken and hurt. I was worse for the sand, not better. Anybody? I'm not a beach, I'm not a runner, period. But a beach runner, forget about it. And the same thing is true in our life. If we're trying to build on the sand, traction comes hard. You ever see those people around you? You're like, oh my gosh, how can they just move through life like that? How can they just, just up and do that thing and it's just successful? How, how can this, this issue come into their life and they just kind of glide right through it like it's nothing? How is that even possible? How could they have that sort of traction? It's not them. It's where they're built right? It's, it's, not the, it's not even the structure that they built. It's where they've been built. And each and every one of us, if we are lacking traction, I think at times we do that because we're, we're stepping in some sand. I've been, I've been stuck in sand before with a car. It is way harder to get out than anything I've done in snow so far. Snow is great, but eventually there's a bottom, baby. Like <laughs> sand never ends. I don't know, it just, there's just, it starts to melt into lava eventually. It just goes down there. I get, I, it, was, it was so tough to get out. That's sand. So where you build is so important. So here's the question, <laughs> where's the where? Like if there's this where we need to be, where's the where? Well, Jesus says, those who listen to what I say and put it into action are the wise ones. Those wise ones are like the people who built on the foundation of rock, the rock, the bedrock, the solid footing. So it's not the people that heard the message, it's the people that did something about it. You don't know where the where is? The where is where you listen to him and do what he says. That's foundation. Is that easy? It is not easy. I'll just fill in the blank for you. Because there's so many times in life where God says to do something and I don't want to do it. Anybody, any other people that are mostly saved like me? Kind of saved, right? Like, you're just like, man, I struggle sometimes. 
Like all these things in the Bible that I'm supposed to be doing. And you know what? I'm just trying to deal. I'm just trying to survive a little bit over here. You know why you're so exhausted? You're just trying to survive over here? Because you've been spinning your wheels in the sand. If we would jump on the, the traction train, we start to get our life on the rock, saying yes to the things of God would come a lot easier over the course of time. So where's the where? The where is where we say yes to him. Uh, I, I, love, um, I love how James says it like this. James chapter one. If, if you've read the book of James, you know that he doesn't pull any punches. If you're a very direct person, James might be your favorite book because James just tells it like it is. He says this, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Don't just listen and lie to it yourself. Don't be that guy that's like, oh, I'm built, baby, I'm built. Threes, come over to my house for barbecue later, I'm built, right? Like anybody, like that, he's like, don't do that. Don't be the kind of person that just listens and lies to yourself. We're, we're great at lying to ourselves. Sometimes we look in the mirror and we're like, dang. And it's kind of a lie some days, right? Like anybody? <laughs> we also do the opposite. Like, oh my gosh, you're not any good. And the truth is you're really good. We lie to ourselves. We all lie to ourselves in that way. He says, but don't listen to the word. Don't listen to what Jesus is saying. And then just listen. Don't deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. James is like, this is how dumb you are. And the, 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 the inference in this mirror, looking at yourself in the mirror, is you look at yourself in the mirror and you see something wrong and you just walk away and go, ah, I don't want to deal with it. Like, bro, you didn't even brush your hair. Ah, it's, it's fine. You got spinach in your teeth and you're going in for the interview. It's whatever. You, for, you choose to forget what you look like. That's what he's saying. You're lying to yourself when you look at God's word and you don't do anything about it. You just go, but I'd rather do it this way. And what James is saying is you're lying to yourself and you're moving yourself off the foundation of Christ and lying to yourself about it. I'm fine. This is good. Have you guys ever seen the meme? with like the dog and like the fire. And it's like, uh, this is fine. Nobody else is online. You're, I'm the only one that saw that. It's fine. It's funny. It's, it, when you look at it, you're, this is fine. My life is falling apart. It's fine. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any traction in my life. This is, this is fine. It's fine. I like it this way. I, I am free to do whatever I want. Look, 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 read right here, whatever I want. It's fine. But your life is not fine because you're stuck. The rock isn't there. And then he goes, but, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law, and here's what that law does, it gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it. Not forgetting, but doing. They will be blessed in what they do. I, I love the, the NRSV says it like this. They will be blessed in their doing. They will be blessed. All of us are doing. I'm doing right now. You're doing right now. We're all doing something. But I love it when he says, when you look at God's word and you assimilate it into your life and you do what it says, your doing will be blessed. But the blessing comes from the doing and not just doing anything, but doing the thing that God asks you to do. So if you want to go down the road to blessing, you got to start with the doing and the doing has to come from what he says. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So we all want the end result, don't we? Who wants to be blessed? I want to be blessed. Come on, I sneeze, you say, bless you, right? Like, I want that. When I, when I, when I give myself out into this world, when I'm, when I'm leading people, teaching, preaching, when I'm tithing and giving and I'm serving the world, I want to be blessed in all of my doing, right? But if I'm going to be blessed in my doing, I have to walk it all the way back to where I'm built on my foundation of Christ Jesus and doing what he says and growing in him. And, and, and not being the kind of person that looks in the mirror and forget what I look like, but I listen and I do. And in my doing, there is a blessing as a result. But I never get to the blessing until I start way back here. And this is called built. <laughs> this is building a life worth living. Does that make sense to you guys? 
I love foundations. That's how we go to eternity, right? Then what you build on it in the very first verse we read, gold, silver, wood, hay, straw, right? Like all those things. I'm telling you gold and silver is a quality way of life (laughs) that leads to something. That leads to that blessing. That leads to that destination. I'm there for it. How about you guys? I want to be built. And I want to be built different than the world. Because my, my world is going to look different when I don't judge myself based on the standards of my culture or the people around me. But I look, as James says, intently at the perfect law. I open up the word and I go, that's what I need to do. And when I build that life, I will be blessed in my doing. I'm a doer. How about you guys? We all, are do- we all do things. How many would love for that doing to be blessed? Right here, baby. I'm on it. I'm here for it. So if there's so much blessing in our doing, the question is, what is our doing? Here's, here's the knock on Christianity. You can't do anything. <laughs> you can't do this. You can't do that. You say no to this. You hate this. You hate that. I went through and I did a little digging on the old interwebs. Google. And I was like, how many commands of Jesus? And there's a lot of different answers. But the general consensus on how many commands Jesus had was 49 different commands. There was like, th- those are the recorded ones. Obviously, he spoke more than that. Old Testament, hundreds. After Jesus, Paul and the apostles give us so many more different things. But in the life of Jesus, 49 different commands. And I'm going to read every single one of them to you right now. Ready? You thought I was joking. (laughs) No, I'm really going to do it. And I want you to listen. Repent. Follow me. Rejoice. Let your light shine. Honor God's law. Be reconciled. Do not commit adultery. Keep your word. Go the second mile. Love your enemies. Be perfect. Practice secret disciplines. Lay up treasures. Seek God's kingdom. Judge not. Do not cast pearls. Ask, seek, and knock. Do unto others. Choose the narrow way. Beware of false prophets. Pray for laborers. Be wise as serpents. Fear not. Hear God's voice. Take my yoke. Honor your parents. Beware of leaven. Deny yourself. Don't despise children. Go to offenders. Beware of covetousness. Give, forgive offenders, honor marriage, be a servant. Be, this would be a house of prayer. Ask in faith, bring in the poor, render to Caesar. What is Caesar's? Love the Lord, love your neighbor, await my return. Remember me, be born again, keep my commandments, watch and pray, feed my sheep, baptize my disciples, receive God's word or God's power and make disciples. Was that a restrictive list to you? He's like, go, 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 do, do, do. That, there's five times in there he says, do not. Five times. One of them is do not despise children. So come on, that's a gimme, right? Like that's not so restrictive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Another one's do not fear. Hey, is that hard? Yes. Should we do it? Yeah. Is it restrictive? No. Another one, don't commit adultery. I'm going to keep that one on the list. How about you guys? Don't cast pearls before swine. Like, well, that one needs some explanation. And I don't have time for that. But there's a verse in the Bible for you. It's a whole parable that Jesus. But look, five out of 49 were do nots. And most of those do nots were like, yeah, that's a good one. Right? So less than 10% of all the commands of Jesus were what you can't do. And the rest are what he's calling you to do. He's calling you to build this life. He's calling you to build this way. He's calling you to build the life that leads down the road to be blessed in your doing. And the things he's saying saying stay away from are the things that will not bring blessing into your life, but will bring pain and anguish and hurt. When we look at the life of faith, there are a lot of people that will tell you it's too restrictive. But all that restriction came from people like us, not him. 
Because all he's ever done is say, go, 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 build, 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 build. He wants that for you. He wants you to build that life on the rock. He wants you to have the gold and silver to put on there to last through the flames, right? He wants you to do that. He wants that life for you. That's amazing, isn't it? Don't we all need that? Don't you want more of that? It all starts by building on the rock, right? That's where it starts. So I want to I uh, give you a verse and I'm going to wrap up with this verse. I'm not saying the sermon's over, but I'm just saying this is the last verse we're going to use, okay? And it comes from the book of 1 John chapter 5. And I love, I love 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John because the tone of John is a little different. Like the other passages of scripture are written sort of in the moment. Like, like writing a letter to a destination. It's like right now. Uh, recording the gospels. It's like, Jesus did this. Okay, let's write that one down and let's pass it along. And, but John is at the very end of his life. He's Grandpa John now. He's had time to reflect and sit. He was actually in exile on an island living out there away from everybody. And it's just him and God communing. And he starts writing some letters. Grandpa John. And, and the older John got, it seems like, he seems like he turned a direction. And all of us, as we get older, there's two directions that we get. We, we, we get older and life beats the bitterness into us or beats the bitterness out of us. And the choice is ours. You're like a fine wine. Well, maybe not so fine. Sometimes you get bitter. But sometimes you get sweet, right? And we get the choice to age however we want. And in John's case, he's Grandpa John. He's loving. He's caring. He's just... He's walked through life enough that there's just this, this overwhelming love and joy in John. So when you read him, it's like putting on a warm blanket sometimes. You know what I'm saying? That's John. He's, he's the disciple that talks about love a lot in the gospel, John. The love of God. Oh man, he loves you so much. Because that's, that's where he is in his life at that point. He's just kind of pouring it out, showing the love of the Father. And in 1 John chapter 5, it says this. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. We just just showed you 49. I don't think any of those were super burdensome, do you? It just, they're not hard. They're not there to weigh you down. They're actually there to build you up. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. I need that. How about you? And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Where we're built. Our faith. Where we're built. I was studying this verse this week. And I was looking up different words in this passage in in the Greek. Um, This is written in Greek. And uh, just trying to gain some insight. To, to like, sometimes the English language is kind of shallow, lacks some depth. And uh, this passage, right there at the end, it says, and this victory that has overcome the world, our faith. That word victory in Greek is the word Nike, which just kind of fits my life, you know? You can walk in Nikes and walk in victory. Not literally, but like, but I want you to put that on your mental picture real quick. I want, you, I want you to think through the way you walk because we've been talking about foundations, right? If I take a step, I want to take a step in Nike. Victory. Nike and victory are synonymous from here on out. I'm not talking about shoes. <laughs> Although you know I had to wear Nikes today, just because, <laughs> just because. So if I'm going to be built differently, I've got to walk differently, right? And when I walk differently, I got to choose my steps wisely because I'm going to walk on a different foundation. And my foundation, the way I walk, is the walk of victory. Which John tells us, the walk of victory 
is the walk of faith. You guys get it? And this is the victory that has overcome the entire world. Everything in the world can be overcome by one thing, where you're built, your faith. Will the storm come? Yes. Will it be everything you wanted? Probably not. But is there a foundation called faith that you can walk in and survive? The answer is yes. Amen? Let's walk in victory today. Can you guys do that with me? It starts with our choice of faith. How we're going to build. Where we're going to build. So I want to end today with, with a challenge. The first one is, if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus with your life, I challenge you to do that today. Build your life on the rock of Christ Jesus. And when the storm comes, you'll stand firm. But if you don't, it says that the house will fall and how great a fall that will be. So I'm choosing today to build so that in the future, I can say I had already built on the rock of Jesus. Now, for those of you who have never followed Christ, or sorry, are following Christ, I'm gonna give you a one-year challenge. Be like, TJ, a year's a long time. I don't even know what's gonna be happening in a year. That's fine. If you're built on the rock of Christ Jesus, I know where you're gonna be. Whether you're here physically or not, you know that the thing that's not going anywhere in your life is Jesus, right? In your relationship with him. So let's build. Let's build that life. So here's the challenge I have for you. I want you to spend time in God's word, prayer, and worship every day. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. This is how you're built. You're built different. Well, you know, but I really like to X, Y, and Z. That's fine. Pray while you do it. Get in the word, right? Like, get up in there. Spend some time in worship. Thanking him. A life of gratitude will do you a lot of good, don't you think? Second thing. The Bible tells us that we should not forsake gathering. So when you're in town, can you build your activities around showing up and worshiping God together and learning and growing together? Does it make sense? It's, it's going to change the where we're built. It's going to change the way we're built. That's what we're going to do. This is a challenge. Uh, use your spiritual gifts regularly. You're going, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. Well, I would like to invite you to discovery class. That's how we help people discover their gifts. You're going, well, I have gifts. I just don't know how to use them. Great. Uh, I would like for you to come to discovery class as well. And I will teach you how to use them. And if you know what they are and how to use them, but you're not using them, challenge you to do that. If you have the gift of teaching, teach. The gift of mercy, show mercy. Gift of leadership, lead well as you serve others. There's a ton of gifts. Use them. I want you to be conscious on how you use them and the way you put them into practice to be used by God. Uh, and then as you're doing that, you are giving of yourself, which is the next challenge. Serve other people. Go out of your way to be that kind of a person, to pray for others, to serve others, and to give of yourself in every aspect of your life. And yes, that does include finances. Because God asks us to be overflowing from our life to be a generous person. So give of yourself. Uh, another one is build godly relationships. Last week we talked about building a foundation and we talked about how we're just rocks off of the rock of Christ Jesus. When we build that foundation, we're building on him. And the more rocks we stack together, the bigger the foundation could be. Imagine a church where all of us are laying foundations and we're building foundation and we're growing and we're impacting the kingdom of God like never before. That takes relationships. So if you're like, TJ, I don't know anybody in this church. That's okay. I know how to make that happen. We have small group signups starting next week for three weeks. Done. We have serve teams that serve all the time. And you know what you have to do when you're serving? You have to talk to other people. And there's a chance that they might like you and you might build a relationship. All right? 
That's how it works. And then finally, I want you to lead your friends and family to do the same. Because I don't want to think about just us in this room. I want to think about the next generation. When I look at these things, I'm looking at my kids going, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want to see in their lives. This is what I want to give them that I never got. Here's what I want to give them that I did get, that I did like, that I did need. When Andrew had us uh, sing that song together as we were praying with someone, my daughter's serving back over here, and I got to sing it over her. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. That's the foundation of our family. It's the foundation of our life. And I want my friends and my family to live just like that. Because the hankies, we're built, baby. We are built. And I'm going to live that out. How about you guys? Challenge you. I dare you to build a life like that. Because you know what? At the end of it all, at the end of it all, there's going to be more joy, more passion, more fulfillment when your life is built like that. And it's not doing it out of compulsion, but it's doing it out of joy. Remember the 49 commands? He wants you to build that kind of life. He wants your life to grow. I believe that with all my heart. And he wants you to expand that to the world around you and be generous with your life. So church, that's your challenge this year. 2023. I'm not going to make you sign anything. You know what it's worth. All right? So let's do this. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads. We're going to pray. For those of you who have never made a decision to follow Jesus, I want you to do that today. That was the very first challenge I gave to you guys. It's to build your life just different. Look different. Be built different. Today, if that's you, I want you to pray a prayer with me. It's a simple prayer that says, God, I'm choosing you. I've been doing it my own way. Forgive me for that. Today I want you. So right where you are, let's pray this. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for grace. Thank you, God, for forgiving me. Today I receive that. Today I choose to make you the rock on which I build, the Lord of my life. I surrender all to you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Everybody says, amen. Come on, put your hands together for people to pray that prayer. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, when you came in today, you would have gotten one of these. It's called our Connect card. I talked about it already. So I've given you plenty of time to fill it out. So there's zero excuses on why you didn't. I'm praying for you. And don't you want me to pray with you? This is not a guilt. Well, it's a guilt trip. I'm guilt tripping you into turning in your card so I can pray for you. This is, this is good, right? And so I encourage you to do that. If it's your first time, mark the box. If you prayed that prayer, mark the box on there. that says, I'm committing life to Jesus. I want to help you walk this journey out, okay? I want you to journey with me together. And uh, in the way out, there's going to be some buckets. Just put it in the bucket on the way out. Also, opportunity to give on your way out. We have envelopes if you want to give in person. That's the way we do it. So you can drop it in on the way out. You can also give online at refresh.church or text any amount to 84321. And there's two major areas in which our church gives. And I'm so thrilled that our church understands this. We have what the Bible calls obedience. We tithe. That's what we do. That's how we build our life is around that. And then anything above that is called an offering. So it's our general fund and our kingdom builders fund. This is the way that the church builds incredible things. In fact, last month, uh, we were able to do incredible works. Our church raised $50,000 extra just to give away to people all around the world and here locally to change lives, to change people both in the faith and outside the faith. Isn't that amazing? That's called an offering. Yeah, come on. We can celebrate that because that's generosity and that's above and beyond. I'm so pumped about that. We can celebrate the tithe too because that's obedience and man, God is so glorified and honored in that. So there's a couple different ways for us to respond today. We'll have prayer people down here at the front. 
ready to go. If you need prayer, don't walk out of here not getting prayer. Like we want to pray with people. Sometimes life gets a little messy and you need someone just to be there with you. We're here for you. If you need to leave something here today that you don't need to walk out with, maybe it's a hurt, a pain, an unforgiveness, something, why don't you just come up, leave it at the cross. We've got a little notepad there. And then also we got communion down here at the front. If you need to just take a moment and remember the cross, remember the grace of Jesus and his blood that was shed for you, for your forgiveness, I encourage you to do it. Take communion as often as you can. Remember him as often as you can. So the team's gonna lead us in worship. Will you guys stand with me and I'll pray over you? Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your grace. And as we've taken this time to declare we are built on the rock of Christ Jesus, that we'd walk in this world fully accepting the call we have to build a life that honors you and changes the world. And Father, as we refresh others in our going, may we too be a people who are refreshed by you. Thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen.